How's it going everybody? Welcome back to some more NPy screen tutorials and videos with the Python language. Uh, in the last video we were looking at widgets, and now we're actually going to backtrack and look a little bit more at forms. <laughs> I know I'm kind of jumping around, being weird all over the place with these uh, concepts and uh, things to learn, but I, I hope it is building in your mind and you're kind of seeing how it all pieces together. So. I'm back on the documentation looking at the form objects that we were looking at before and now we'll actually take a look at some of the attributes and things that we can play with in our form object. We'll actually try and extend the functionality looking at different kinds of forms and we'll play with some of the stuff that we can do here. Uh, you'll notice that the forms have the following class attributes so we can kinda change this stuff. <laughs> The default values that are initialized initially <laughs> duh, will create a form that fills the whole screen and is displayed in the top left corner. You can see the arguments passed into the constructor for more details on controlling the size of a form. So let's play with the size first. That'll be a, an interesting thing to do. You'll notice that these arguments here that we can pass in the constructor, you can adjust the size of the form either providing an absolute size with lines and columns, or a minimum size, with minimum lines and minimum columns. The default minimums, 24 by 80, provide the standard size for a pretty standard terminal. If you plan, to, if you plan your forms to fit within that size, they should be viewed on almost all systems without the need to scroll the form. Note that you can use absolute sizing in one direction and the minimum in another, should you wish. Okay, so if we wanted to specify what size they were and make it static, note that we aren't actually calling a, a real constructor for our form object. We're passing it into the add form function in our app uh, object, our application manager and application class. So all of these things in here are where we actually pass in the arguments for our, our, our form constructor. So let's say we wanted only lines to be 10. Let's say we only wanted 10 lines. Uh, actually, before I do all that, I'll, I'll save this as a new script, 06. Thank you for reminding me, guys. I know you got my back. <laughs> okay, so now we'll have 10 lines this time around. I'll run this code, Python 06, and we got 10 lines. Sweet. How about we do it with columns? We can specify columns can be like 40 or something. Now we got a smaller form, got a smaller window. Now notice it's still way up at the top left, though. Uh, what if we wanted to change the position? Now, the documentation, I've noticed, I could be wrong here, I may be very blind to it, but I couldn't find a whole lot on changing the position of the form. It goes into a bunch of stuff on changing the position of a widget. Like, every time I search for position, it always tells me, oh, yeah, we can change the position of a widget, but it doesn't specify anything about a form. So, I kind of pieced it together. Now, it tells us we have these following class attributes, and show at x and show at y are assuming are what we need to change. So I modified that in my code over in the create like initialize function. And I set self dot show at show underscore at x and I set that equal to like ten or something. Or uh or let's say let's say forty, because we know we have a, a big a big screen. So when I run this code, nothing happens. And I couldn't figure out why. So I actually did a little bit of an interesting thing here. What I did was I, I wanted to examine the variables that uh, the form object has. So what I did is I set the value of the title text, like the text box that we've set up in our form, that widget there, and I set it to equal the string of the variables that are stored inside this object. So that allowed me to kind of do some introspection and look through all this, all of these variables. And actually, it's it's pretty bad when I don't have the full screen. I'll actually comment this out for now and then run the code. So now you should be able to see a little bit more of the variables that we're looking at. Um, the home button unfortunately doesn't work, but it's way, way back at the very, very beginning of this. So you'll have to take my word for it, but that's how I kind of learned that, okay, this documentation, uh, show at X and show at Y, they're actually lowercase. So, show underscore add x. Now it should work. I'll add our smaller lines and smaller width and height right here. And I'll actually remove this value. 
But if you notice, now when I run the code, hey, we're way over here. We moved the position because of our show at x variable. I guess I will go to like 20 and then show at y can be like 5. So hey, now we've moved the position and we've changed the size. So that's kind of cool in case you want to uh, play a little bit more with your forms. So now let's move on to the other stuff. Those are things that we can do, of course, to change the position and the size, but there's a little bit more functionality that we can add to it. Notice uh, it explains a little bit more about placing the widgets on the form. Since we've done this now, uh, it's okay for me to look at this stuff <laughs> and actually show you some of it. An interesting thing here is that the position and the size of a widget are controlled by the widget's constructor but there are hints that the form class provides. If you don't override the position of the widget, you might have saw when we were looking at the widget page in the documentation, there was like set rel x and set rel y. It'll be planned according to the form's next rel y and next rel x, correspondingly or whatever. So these attributes are increased automatically every time a widget is placed. But if you, if you increase it yourself, you can leave spaces and gaps between where other widgets are placed. So if I add a new widget, I'll change this to first name, and I'll add a new one called last name. Before I do that, if I say self.nextrelY plus equals one, now there's a little bit more space. Check it out. Now we can see there's last name and first name right up here. But had I not done that, it would have only been just one line separating the two of them. And we can, of course, change this to anything we want. We can say, like, 3. Go way back down there. We could do negative 1. And then we wouldn't change it at all. We'd, like, overwrite it. Did I save it? No, I didn't. Okay. So now, first name and last name are in pretty much the same spot. I could say first name John. Then if I arrow down, Hammond. <laughs> it's like they're on top of each other. The only, th the only thing that's going to be visible is the, is the one that's active, or the one that was most previously active. Of course, you'd never really do that, but I want to show you that you can. The same thing works for Nextrel X. Like, if I bring this way over to... Uh, Nextrel X normally isn't added to, because you'll notice when we uh, didn't run it, it's in the same, of course, X direction. It hasn't moved horizontally. But if I were to add to it, let's say, 5 coordinates over... Now I've got an indent. I'm way over here. So that's easy enough to learn, right? So nextrel x and nextrel y are variables that you can play with and learn. Uh, while editing, and uh, these are things that are, this, this is a method that's called as the user moves between widgets. You can override this if you want to and do some interesting things with it. Adjust widgets, there's another one you can read about. I probably won't touch that while waiting the same thing. Key press timeout, that's interesting. You can actually set up uh, a timeout variable or a value, and uh, it, it goes hand in hand with while waiting. So if you're interested, you can check out the examples, or uh, I mean, I don't know. I recommend you play with it. Okay, this video is getting a lot longer than I expected, I think, so actually I'll move on to the other types of forms, the other forms of a form class that you can use in the next tutorial. We'll get into action form and uh, split form and other cool stuff. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this one. I know it's pretty simple, just kind of rearranging and replacing where our forms are on the screen. But for a user interface, I mean, hey, that stuff's important, right? You're the designer. All right. Thanks again. I'll see you in the next tutorial.